Welcome back everyone, me again, Matt, hope you're having a great day, thank you for joining me on this video. You know, if there's one aircraft when I was younger that I always was fascinated to fly on in terms of helicopters, it was the Chinook. When I first saw the Chinook flying across my head as a young kid at an air show, I was just fascinated, mainly by the sound of the damn thing. You know, most helicopters, they sound pretty cool, but when you hear those twin rotors working almost against one another in the airwaves above you, it is absolutely incredible. It is such a powerful aircraft to be around when you see it landing or when you're actually getting on board of it. Like I did myself in Afghanistan, it actually uh, got me to and from uh, Camp Bastion and the fobs that I was sent to with uh, my attachment to Armored Infantry with the Remi, and I absolutely loved being in the aircraft. I felt safe, I felt comfortable, I had no worries or qualms about being on the helicopter, traveling at such high speeds and at low altitudes, and especially with the uh, sometimes, you know, inbound rounds from uh, ground attack from the Taliban below us. It was uh, a very comfortable aircraft to be a part of too. I had no issues with space. We had all of our gear on there. We had a ton of cargo too. Everybody fit on there comfortably. It was just a bloody good aircraft to fly in. And today we're going to give you a bit of an overview. Is a little bit about what this aircraft can do, where it's come from, and what it's doing today. So the Chinook is a multi-mission heavy lift transport helicopter. It's pretty self-explanatory considering the size of the damn thing. Its primary mission is to move troops, artillery, ammunition, fuel, water, barrier materials, supplies and equipment on the battlefield. Its secondary missions are to include medical evacuation, disaster relief, search and rescue, aircraft recovery, firefighting, parachute drops and heavy construction of civil development. Interestingly enough, this aircraft actually was uh, helping to recover a Apache that crashed in Afghanistan during my time in FOB Edinburgh in, uh, in Afghanistan. There was actually an Apache longbow that actually hit the deck uh, a little too hard and uh, it had to get recovered back to base but of course it being so uh, delicate and you know intricate and highly classified they had to put it on the back of a Chinook, they had to strip it down to its bare bones to actually fit it on the back of there and they actually did that, it was pretty darn impressive now the CH-47 as it's known as its code name arose from a 1956 decision to replace the US Army's piston engine helicopters with a more powerful gas turbine model after a year-long debate over mission requirements, the Army settled on two designs, a troop carrier, the Bell UH-1 Iroquois, and always going to be known as the Huey, and the heavy lift helicopters, the Boeing Vertol YHC-1B, which first flew on September 21st, 1961, and became to be known as the CH-47 in 1962. The twin rotor CH-47, named after the Native Americans of the Pacific Northwest, proved stable, agile and fast during flight tests, extremely fast. Production began in late 1963 and deliveries to the 11th Air Assault Division started a year later. The division, reflagged as the 1st Cavalry Division, Air Mobile, in June 1965, deployed to Vietnam with three Chinook companies that September. Crews quickly learned to mount a 7.62mm M60 machine gun in the front of each forward doors, and sometimes they even installed an M60 or M250 caliber machine gun to fire from the rear cargo door as well. Pilots discovered that the CH-47 Alpha's transmission system could not handle the two gas turbines running at full power, requiring them to be very careful in their power settings when flying. Another complication, Vietnam's high humidity and heat reduced the helicopter's maximum lift by more than 20% in the lowlands and 30% in mountainous areas. The more powerful CH-47Bs arrived in 1968, followed just a few years later by the CH-47Cs, which both enjoyed greater horsepower and improved transmission and strength and fuselage. Their 10-ton cargo capacity proved a massive, massive benefit to commanders on the battlefield. At the war's peak, the army had 21 Chinook companies in Vietnam. Nearly as ubiquitous as the iconic Huey, they provided the tactical heavy lift so vital to the air mobility concept. The CH-47D Chinook is now the US Army's primary heavy troop and supply transport helicopter. Originally fielded in the Vietnam War, the CH-47 has undergone a huge amount of upgrades to increase its lift and airworthiness in combat environments for today. Beginning in 1982 and ending in 1994, all CH-47 Alphas, Bravos and Charlie models were upgraded to the CH-47D version, which as I said remains as the US Army standard and features composite rotor blades, an improved electrical system, modularized hydraulics, triple cargo hooks, avionics and communication improvements, and more powerful engines that can handle up to 19,500 pounds of load, nearly twice that of the Chinook's original lift capacity. 
An upgrade program exists to remanufacture 300 of the current fleet of the 425 CH-47Ds to the CH-47F standard. The MH-47E is a special forces variant of the Chinook and will be remanufactured to the MH-47G. The Chinook's cockpit accommodates two pilots and an observer. The communication suite includes a jam-resistant HF and UHF radio system, and the helicopter is equipped with an identification friend or foe interrogator. Three machine guns or miniguns can be mounted on the helicopter, two in the crew door on the starboard side and one window mounted on the port side. Additionally, the helicopter is equipped with a suite of countermeasures that are put in place such as flares and chaff, which could include one or more of the following, a missile approach warner, jammers, radar warner and chaff or flare dispensers which can be placed in multiple areas upon the aircraft depending on the situation it's placed in. The Chinook has a triple hook system which provides stability to large external loads or for the capacity for multiple external loads. As you can see by these Chinooks right now pulling in M777s, they are very effective at getting a battle group onto the field efficiently with heavy loads. The artillery actually utilizes the Chinook heavily from all over the world. Whether it be the British using the 105mm gun, or the American Marines or Army using the M777, even the Canadians have utilized the M777 in its own heavy lift platform, the Chinook is utilizing the artillery very closely together in a combined arms effort. And that's seen across all spectrums of the military, whether it be logistics, armoured, they can even lift in vehicles. It's a very powerful aircraft and something that is a bit of a game changer to the majority of the battle groups out there today. Large external loads such as the 155mm howitzer like the M777 can be transported at speeds up to 260km an hour using the triple hook load configuration. Multiple external loads can be delivered or two to three separate destinations in one sortie. The cabin provides 42 cubic meters of cargo space and 21 square meters of cargo floor area and can accommodate two Humvees or high mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicles or a Humvee together with a 105mm howitzer and gun crew which is basically saying that the aircraft can lift a small detachment of gun batteries into the battlefield very very quickly. The main cabin can hold up to 33 fully equipped troops. For medical evacuation, the cabin can accommodate 24 litters or stretchers of troops if it came down to it. Pretty scary stuff to know that it can carry 24 wounded troops inside of there, but obviously its main purpose is actually to carry the boys in and out of the battlefield. And as you can see by these troops bailing in and out of this thing, there's a lot of room to move even with all that heavy kit and multitudes of kit that you have on you. Ramp operations can be carried out on water using an optional power down ramp and water dam configuration. The Chinook is equipped with two T55GA714 Alpha turboshaft engines which are absolute beasts. They are pod mounted on either side of the rear pylon under the rear rotor blades. The self sealing fuel tanks are mounted in external fairings on the side of the fuselage. The fixed tanks hold a massive 1030 gallons of fuel. Three additional fuel tanks can be carried in the cargo area. In-flight refueling can extend the range of the MH-47 helicopter as well, although not all model configurations have the refueling probe. The CH-47F upgrade program involves the installation of the new digital cockpit and modifications to the airframe to reduce overall vibration. The upgraded cockpit will provide future growth potential and will include a digital data bus that permits installation of enhanced communications and navigation equipment for improved situational awareness and mission performance, including survivability. Airframe structural modifications also reduce harmful vibrations to the troops and the aircraft itself, reducing operations and support costs and improving the crew endurance. Flying in a helicopter that's very vibrational with that big old rotor above you is not going to go well on the concentration of the pilot and in terms of the structural integrity of the aircraft being affected as well, it's pretty scary to know that you may be flying something that can shake itself to death. Other airframe modifications will reduce by approximately 60% the time required for an aircraft teardown and build up after deployment on a C5 or C17 heavy lift aircraft. These modifications will significantly enhance the Chinook's strategic capability. First unit equipped or FUE date for the CH-47 was completed in September 2004. A separate but complementary effort involves the installation of more powerful and reliable T55 GA741 Alpha engines that improve fuel efficiency and enhance lift performance by approximately another 3,900 pounds, enabling it to carry the M198 155mm towed howitzer. Installation of an improved crash-worthy extended range fuel system will enable Chinook's self-development and deployments to extend the operational radius of all other missions. 
post-war improvements really have enabled the Chinook to serve to this day very, very well. If you remember the movie Lone Survivor, they were quite heavily uh, involved in that mission, and unfortunately one of the Chinooks was engaged and destroyed with Navy SEALs and the crew members inside, which was uh, an awful scene to watch in that movie, it really was. It was kind of heartbreaking, uh, seeing and knowing that, that was a real situation, and that members of uh, you know that military organization was lost. It was uh, it brought a tear to my eye, it was really touching, and uh, you know when you see that helicopter uh, you know, hovering at that height, and you think it really is exposed... It's scary stuff, you know, I say to myself I, I felt very safe inside the helicopter in Afghanistan, but of course being operating in such tight, close environments like mountainous regions, I can see the risk that these aircrafts would have. They also flew in Pakistan to recover documents and material following the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound. They've also proved to be the best platform for troop assault missions in Afghanistan's high mountains. Perhaps nothing speaks better to the enduring value of the Chinook's design and the Army's air mobility pioneers than the Chinook itself. For the UK, in addition to its traditional warfighting roles, the Chinook's lifting capability is held at readiness under the National Resilience Commitment to respond to emergencies in the UK. In recent years, these included resupplying snowbound farmers in Northern Ireland and moving tons of aggregate to help reconstruct flood defences damaged by winter storms. The current operational Chinook fleet of the UK comprises of Mark IV and Mark VI aircraft fitted with digital glass cockpits. The Mark VI also benefits from a Digital Automatic Flight Control System, or the DAFCS, pronounced DAFIX, and greatly enhancing handling and safety, particularly when operating in recirculating dust or snow conditions. The Extended Range Mark III, or Fat Tank aircraft, doubles the fuel load of the standard Chinook and having been upgraded to the glass cockpit configuration, returns the fleet as back to the Chinook HCM Mark V. The Mark IV is further modified an embodiment of the DAFCIS, resulting in the Chinook HS Mark VI Alpha configuration. This type will continue to play a key role in the UK defence activity, with the Chinook sustainment program aiming to build on the platform's successes, recapitalising on existing airframes and extending the capability out to 2040. The two Honeywell T55 LL417 Boeing could easily pitch Chinooks with new engines to future operators and offer retrofits to countries that already have CH-47 fleets. The Chinook has a well-established operator base and has sales continued to be relatively steady in the recent years, with the US government proving another prospective sale of the CH-47Fs to the United Arab Emirates. India has received its first Chinooks, and Israel and Germany are also actively looking for helicopters to replace some of the Sikorsky CH-53 Yazoos and CH-53Gs respectively, and they have narrowed down their search to the CH-47F and the CH-53K. Of course, these aircrafts have so much more modifications, but what exactly are there? The CH-47F with the t 408 had a potential to be significantly more capable than the helicopter in its existing configuration, which already has very good speed, payload, and hot and high performance. The General Electric engines each produce 7,500 shaft horsepower, around 2,005 shaft horsepower, more than the T-55 GA741 Alphas. This is the standard F model. Boeing has said that the Block 2 CH-47Fs will already have increased performance compared to the original F variants, even without the new engines. A T-408 equipped CH-47F still won't have the same lifting power and maximum payload of the capacity of the Sikorsky CH-53K, but it's possible that the new engines could close that gap and make the upgraded Chinooks much more attractive when compared to the extremely expensive and troubled King Stallion. So there you have it folks, the CH-47 Chinook and all its glory and variants. I hope you enjoyed today's video, please let me know what you thought of it, leave me a like or a comment in the comment section below. I also have a lot of social media links that you can click in the description box below, including my Patreon page. If you wish to support my channel, I would really appreciate you go check out my Patreon page, and thank you to everyone who has so far. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the near future, please hit that little bell button by the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it, folks, because it just allows me to bypass the YouTube algorithm that is just completely bypassing my content recently. I think we're getting off to a good start for 2020. Some interesting vehicles we're starting to discuss here through the new year. I hope you're enjoying them. As I said, make sure you leave me some feedback so I can be notified of any kind of equipment you want me to look at in the future. And I can't wait to have another video released for you soon. I'll see you in the near future, folks. Have a wonderful day and a big shout out and respect to all those personnel serving, flying, and operating with the CH-47 Chinook. Thank you to everyone, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.